One of the disadvantages of staying in a motel room is that you generally don't have cooking facilities and that means it can be hard to prepare a meal if you're on a budget and you don't want to eat out all the time. But we're going to show you just what a wide range of things you can prepare in your room using only the kettle and the iron. There are three essential items you should pack if you want to turn your motel room into a kitchen. The first is a plastic combination spoon and fork. While you might get a teaspoon in your room, you're very unlikely to get a fork or a knife and this is going to make it much easier to eat. Go with plastic, that way it can go in your hand luggage and you don't have to worry about it getting misplaced. The second crucial item is to have a plastic takeaway food container. Not only can you use this as a bowl, it can also help with your cooking as you learn. Finally, in order to make use of that iron, you're going to want to have some aluminium foil. You don't actually have to bring the whole roll, you can just take out a couple of sheets, but it really will make all the difference, as we'll discover. Okay, let's make some couscous and corn. First of all, let's prepare our couscous. Just get your packet. You could possibly take it a bit less than this, but I do love my couscous. Um, pour some into your takeaway container. Just enough to cover the bottom should be enough. Then add your hot water that's just boiled. You want to well and truly cover what's in there. Then when that's done, pop the lid on so that it steams away quietly and leave that for about five minutes and then we'll give it enough time to soak up the boiling water and it'll be pretty much ready to eat. So while the couscous is cooking, we're going to prepare some corn kernels. It's important if you're getting yourself a tin of corn to get the one with the self-opening can because you're probably not going to remember to pack a can opener. So we'll drain the liquid off that and then we're going to cook it in the kettle. Okay folks, it's the moment of truth. Time to add those corn kernels to the kettle. There we go. And then we'll boil that up to gently steam them. So you might be thinking, how am I going to drain all that water from the kettle off the corn before I eat it? There are a couple of ways you can do it. If you're brave, you could just stick your fork over the spout of the kettle, pour the liquid away and hope that not too much corn went all over your bathroom. I'm not that brave, so I'm going to make use of another spare plastic container so that I can pour the corn into that and then gently drain the liquid away. Okay, so now our couscous should be nice and steamed in here. Oh, yep, looking good. Let's pour on our corn. A little bit of scraping going on there to get it out. And with that poured on, we can stir it together. We're going to have an excellent meal. Okay, time to hoe in. Well, juicy, flavorful, amazing. Thumbs up, 10 out of 10, we'll eat again. Okay, so let's see if we can boil eggs in the kettle. Two important things to know here. First of all, we're boiling the eggs whole with their shells on. This is not the place to be experimenting with poached eggs or scrambling. Second point is you want to start with the kettle full of cold water, put the eggs in, boil it, and then you should have some nice soft boiled eggs. So let's get that process started, grab our eggs, and pop them in the kettle, which is already nicely filled with water. Fire it up. Extracted the egg from the kettle. Now it's time to see how well cooked it is. Okay, that is in fact even better cooked than I thought. That is getting closer at the outside to hard boiled than soft boiled. But if we plunge in a little bit, that is some sweet eggy goodness right there. Let's find the yolk. Oh yeah, hey! And there's yolk going everywhere, people. This is a disaster. But an excellent tasting disaster. So, apart from the egg all over my shirt, and very soon all over my face, that is definitely a good way of getting yourself a nice soft boiled egg. The difficulty is in extracting them. Can you make a grilled cheese sandwich only using an iron? Let's find out. Okay, so our first recipe here is the grilled cheese sandwich. We begin that as normal. We're just going to spread some butter. We've got our thread here. Add our sliced cheese. Close it up. And then put it up directly. Wrap it carefully in the foil. So, with it carefully wrapped up, 
time to cook. You may need to give it a couple of minutes for each side, so we're going to show this and fast forward. When it's time to turn it over, make sure you use a face washer or something similar as an oven bit so that you don't burn your hand. Time for round two. Many months later. Okay. It's flattened, it's smelling good. Let's see what's actually coming out from in there. Well, hey, that is quite a respectable looking toasted cheese sandwich. A couple of minutes of ironing later, and we have ourselves an excellent grilled cheese sandwich. That is impressively good. I don't know that I always want to have cheese to a hotel, but my goodness, it's going to be tempting. Can you grill a fish using only an iron in a hotel room? Let's find out. Okay, so the grilled cheese sandwich was a big success. Now it's time to try out whether you can actually grill fish. This should be easier because the fish is very moist and fish never takes very long to cook. So the basic technique is exactly the same. We fold the fish inside some layers of foil, seal off the ends a little bit to avoid any juice escaping, and then apply that big hot iron. Smells fresh, so before I head fully in, let's just take a look at me and see how it fits. Oh yeah. Cooked very nicely. Let's test this up with a little lemon. Oh yeah. Again, impressively, as an experiment, that was a total success. If you really want to cook yourself a fresh piece of fish in your hotel room, there's nothing much to stop you except the complaints of all the people in the other rooms. So there you go, a banquet fit for a king, or at least the king of the cheapskates. And we proved that it really is possible to cook an entire meal in your hotel room. But let's be honest, you might find it easier just to go out.